Yo, if you score on me and you watch that replay, it's done. Don't do I'ma it. I'ma hit you with like a hundred drag backs. I'ma park the bus. We gonna hold the ball all day and have a lovely old time. No cap. I can run the game in sandals. Bow. No long talk, no ramble. Bow. If I score once, it's done. I'ma hold the ball, you won't have fun. Boom, 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 boom. Cash around the back, no shame. Bow. It's more than just a game. Bow. If you promise me elite, I'ma sell my mom's soul today. Bow. Gold one, gold one, all I hit is gold one. All I had is gold one, gold one, and I'm stuck in gold one. All I had is gold one, gold one. I can't hit elite three. You can never see me in elite. No. Yes, guys, what is going on? It is your boy One Star Week and welcome back to another episode of the Broke Boy Road to Glory Ultimate Team of the Season Edition. I mean, there's a lot of things that happened FIFA wise today. All right, so first off, they dropped Ultimate Team of the Season, and we're already seeing. Who 90% of people are gonna get in their red picks? Somer. It's about to be a hot boy Somer. All in the, in the wrong ways. Um, they also dropped this guy, 92 rated Grealish. And to be fair, he looks like a very decent card. Um, will I do him? Let's see. I'm not sure. These rivals objectives are not fun at all. And they're so sweaty, I hate doing them. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna do them. I probably will if I have the time, but if I don't, then it is what it is. I don't really feel like I'm missing out on much. Uh, they also dropped a new season today, and I was very hopeful, but I don't know why. Because EA just disappointed me, big time. I mean, all right, we got the lone icons, which we're gonna see in the weekend league coming, coming soon, right? Um, we got level 15 right here. And this guy looks like the best level 15 player, and he he's not really a good card. Um, there are free cards on this game that are better than him. We got this guy. Um, so they're going with the American theme yet again, um, giving another American card, a very overpowered card. But yeah, this is not really what you want at the end of the game. You got 77 composure, 74 reactions on this card, and he's in the Danish league. So he's very difficult to link. And then you got this guy. Um, we finally get a decent left back in the Bundesliga, but we already got team of the season left backs in the Bundesliga. So he's very late. Um, and we look at him, he's just not a great card. Uh, he's six foot one, he's gonna feel clunky, he lacks the agility and balance. So yeah, I'm not a fan of any of those cards. I, I guess if I had to pick one, I'd have to take this guy. But yeah, nothing really to write home about there. Um, I'm not even gonna look at the celebrations because I'm not really bothered about them. Whether they give us bad or good ones, it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna play for celebrations. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the level 30. We got Footmas Jesus, risen from the dead. And it's just far too late for this card. I mean, he looks fun, he looks cool, but he has a three-star weak foot. He lacks any decent shooting traits. His passing is mediocre. And yeah, overall, he just looks like a very underwhelming card, all right? You got Matuidi, to be fair, a very, very good card. Um, if you need a out-and-out -out CDM, he has the finesse shot trait, which is cool. He does like the skill moves and weak foot. Um, his agility and balance got a big upgrade here. So honestly, I think as far as the best card goes, Matuidi is probably the best card. But there are a lot of cheaper options um, on this game that you can bring in where you don't have to grind out 30 um, levels of objectives. So I'm not really thinking he's really worth it. We also got Julian Draxler, who looks like a great card. It looks like a poor man Socrates. I do think he's gonna feel clunky even with the dribbling boost. His finishing looks really nice. He has the finesse shot trait. He has the five star weak foot. He looks like he'd make a good CM box to box. So like I said, if I had to pick one, I'd either pick Draxler or I'd pick um, Matuidi, but neither one of them will probably make my end game side. So yeah, this season is very disappointing. Um, one thing that I did like the EA drop today though is gonna be this premium flashback, Dries Mertens. I mean, this car looks sick. He has the important outside and finesse shot traits. His finishing is maxed out and he's not really too expensive. He only requires four squads, uh, an 85, an 85, an 88 and an 86. So I think that's gonna be a very decent value right there. And really the only thing good that EA has dropped today. So that's my opinion. We're gonna move on to the squad. And I did make a new signing. We did have some new additions. As you guys know, we packed Carlos Tevez from the guaranteed Latin American team of the season. And he's been doing wonders for us. We played 10 weekend league games. He has eight goals and five assists. Not too shabby. We also have to buy his friend, Salvio, to link him in. He got the perfect link. He's playing right attacking mid for us. And I really do like what he brings. He's only 192,000 coins. He probably is even cheaper today. But I bought him yesterday because I'm a sucker. All right, that, that is what it is. 
Um, the biggest signing and the one I have to review today, though, is gonna be this 92 rated a tall card. I mean, this is the guy that a lot of people wanted in reds. I don't know how I packed him in gold, too, but I did. And I'm here to review him. He's five for nine. He has high, high work rates. He's right footed with a four star weak foot and five star or oh, four star skills and five star weak foot. I played 10 games in the weekend league with him and I got eight goals and seven assists, which is a massive contribution. Before we go any further, if you're enjoying the content, if you want more player reviews, do me a favor and hit the like button down below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate all you guys at home for watching this video. So, when you look at this Atal card, I mean, you might be wondering at home, what position do you recommend playing him in? And I think you have to play him at camp. You have to play him at striker. You have to play him on the wing. With these attacking stats, they're very wasted if you're playing him in CM or, or CDM. His shooting stats are crazy. 97 finishing, 99 attack positioning with a five star weak foot is gonna be insane. His passing and dribbling looks immense and his physical stats are not too shabby as well. So I'ma stop talking. I'ma jump into some weekend league gameplay. I'ma let you guys know how my weekend league went and I'ma let you guys know, is it all worth it? Let's go. All right, so according to Flipman, this card's costing 1.2 million coins on the PS4 market. One of the few team of the season cards still at that valuation. Is he worth that money? I would have to say absolutely. We're going to break down the stats, though, so you know exactly what to expect. So first, we're going to talk about his pace. He has 98 pace, and it's just as advertised, all right? He accelerates rapidly out of the skill moves. He gets in behind every time you send him in to get in behind. And if you do have the idea to play him in the midfield, his tracking up and down the pitch ability is rivaled by none. Overall, this guy's pace is maxed out, a 10 out of 10. Next, we'll talk about shooting. And I did try him at striker. I did try him at camp. So I did try to shoot with him quite a lot. And a few things did stand out. Number one is his attack positioning. The runs this guy makes is absolutely brilliant. I don't think his high, high work rates really mess him up at all attacking wise. I think his attack positioning is flawless. His finishing at 97 is really nice. I boosted that to 99 with a finisher chem style. That also boosted his shot power to 99. And in game, you definitely notice it. His shots are very accurate. If you get that near post angle, GG, just in the back of the net. Because he has a five star weak foot, it makes it very hard to mark him. Cause he could keep on turning, twisting. He, he could hit the shot either foot. And his shot power ensures that once he hits it on target, it's beating the keeper more times than not. Overall, this guy's shooting is a 9.5 out of 10. He has an incredibly clinical shot. Next, we're gonna talk about his passing. And this is one aspect of the card was, that was massively upgraded. I've tried Shapeshifter at all. I've tried Footmas at all. I have tried every at all you can possibly try on this game. And one um, real thing that I've noticed with those at all cards is that their passing is good, but not great. This at all card is is a beast as far as playmaking goes, all right? He has 86 vision, 92 short passing, 90 long passing, and he now possesses the ability to bring other players into the game. He could be a deep line playmaker if you play him at CDM um, with his over the top through balls, with his driven passes, and his passes in and around the box, if you like the Tiki, if you like the Taka, this guy can pull it off with no issues at all. This guy's playmaking ability is a definite asset to his game, and I gotta give it a nine out of 10. Next, we're gonna talk about his dribbling and Dear Lord, if you've ever heard the word sticky before, this a tall card might be in the dictionary next to it. This guy is incredibly sticky, incredibly slimy, very, very hard to dispossess, and he's very reactive on the ball. His turning ability is second to none. All you gotta do with him is left stick dribble, and you're gonna be able to open up the defense no problem. His L1 strafe dribbling is very nice, and his skill moves at four star skill moves is very nice as well. He has 98 dribbling, 93 ball control, so his Close control in tight areas is very nice. And overall, this guy on the ball is amazing. I, I gotta give him a 9.5 out of 10. He's exactly what you want as far as dribbling goes. Next, we are gonna talk about his defending and his physical. And I did try him in multiple positions, like I said. And I will say that this guy's defending is very solid. It's nothing too crazy, but the fact that his pace is 98. The fact that he has the high, high work rates, tracking up and down the pitch, he's able to put in the shift defensively. He has 85 stand tackling, 93 aggression, 82 strength. So he has a surprising amount of strength going into a challenge. He has a very good challenge on him. I wouldn't say he's a top tier tackler, but he's very, very close. His interceptions at 83 is very mediocre looking, but once again, because of his pace, because of his work rates, he is all over the pitch making, um, 
his his presence known and being able to break up play his physical is very underrated he has 93 aggression 82 strength and that helps him not only defensively but also pushing forward when it comes to shielding this guy's able to shield the ball very well and when he gets dispossessed because of his aggression and strength he's able to hop back onto the ball um and get it back um he becomes a very very hard card to dispossess and a card that does get a lot of second chances overall his defending and physical is an 8.5 out of 10. All right, guys, so what's the final verdict on this card? I am honestly blown away by this card. This a tall card is an absolute game changer. He's been carrying me this weekend league so far, and I am thinking that his best position is the camp position. That's why I've been enjoying him the most. And overall, I gotta give him a 9.5 out of 10. He's the kind of card where you could bring him in, he could play multiple positions, and he could do everything at a high level. He could finish, he could shoot, he has the five-star weak foot. His dribbling is amazing, and his physical and defense are very, very good as well. I have no flaws whatsoever with this card, aside from the fact that he is difficult to link all right guys so speaking of the weekend league what are we up to today so um first things first i gotta let you guys know i have succumbed to the sweat i am now rocking the 4231 i have given up on the 4 triple two i mean with how sweaty the game has become with how slow the game has become i have just now had to go back to playing the 4231. I'm playing very slow, very, very patient play because that's how everybody's playing nowadays. And I feel like if you're not playing in that way, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. The 4231's helped me a lot defensively as well. And um, overall, we are seven and three. We're playing decent. Um, some of the losses we took, I didn't really feel like were deserved. But that's like every weekend league. I'm just trying my best to really secure gold one. After this weekend, I'm going to be taking a break, break next weekend. I'm not playing next weekend. Um, and then every weekend league going forward, I'm not taking it seriously anymore. This this is the last weekend league I'm taking seriously. There will be no more good uh, rewards. And that's why I've gotten to the 4 2 3 one I'm going to sweat it out for one less weekend league. Um, and next, next weekend and every other weekend going forward, I will be trying out new formations, new styles, everything like that to keep it fresh. So, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, I will be streaming the Weekend League live tomorrow on Twitch. Uh, it's going to be a charity stream in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. Catch that at about 2, 3 p.m. Eastern time. The Twitch link is in the description box down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. All right, guys, I will see you guys in the next episode. But until then, later.